Okay, here's the rubric. Let's get that off there. All right, so this is my video for what was supposed to be kind of a math kids game, but I had to bring it back a bit. I did not realize how much I took on when I did this. Um, as you can see, I got my database here, and then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 classes. I could have actually went further with the classes. Um, my main activity in itself is actually quite large, um, a lot of imports. You can see when we come in here, we have, um, we're doing the fire base in here, uh, the sign-in launchers in here, um, everything that has to do with, uh, well, basically Firebase and setting up the database uh, or connecting to the database. And then I did do an XML through this where we go down to that. That'll be the activity main. And my game actually forces into landscape, which actually let me back up to that. We'll go back to kind of maybe cover some of the sensors which are on here, or I'll come back to the sensors. We'll do it in order here. So use and control of application design, uh, multiple classes present, create a well-defined flexible model. Uh, so I do have a lot of classes in here. Here's the manifest. You can see, um, I believe it was at the bottom down here, um, that got landscape right there, screen orientation, um, I do have a Bluetooth uh, permissions on here, so it will recognize my Xbox controller, uh, which it does recognize, but that still needs some tweaking. Um, I did do access aware on it, and then I did do vibrate, and then that will come up to, well, we'll go right through the rubric here. Um, I do have a database on here, which... Let's bring that up. I do have it going, so let's go to App Inspection. And I'm running this on my Samsung. I'll double-click Entity. So right here, you can see this is the phone I have in logged in right now. Um, there we go. We'll lower that, and you'll hear me playing, but you won't see me playing on the uh, phone, but I will have a screen overlay of that. So, and this is just because I killed the, uh, killed the phone. So we'll start the app here. We'll get the app inspection going again. Get entity. There's my phone right there. So I have it set where and I can turn out down the audio. There we go. So we don't need to listen to that. So I have it set where it will continue to update. So. We'll go live update. There we go. So I have it where uh, the database, it's giving the high score. And you'll see with the live, given I can beat my 28 points. I will edit this for content. There you go. So I'm going to beat it here real quick. There you go. So now you can see it's going up. Uh, I have the game set where you get one point for every second you survive. And then 25 points for every meteorite you, or meteor you destroy. Um... And, of course, right now I'm playing really good, so we will let that go. So next time, even if you, um, because it's assigned to your phone, even if you close the app or anything you do to the app and you come back in, it will come and it'll grab the 137. So on the screen, it will have that high score um, or wait. um, waiting for you. Uh, security and Firebase, we kind of went over that a bit ago. Uh, when you log in, in fact, this one will stop on my phone. And I can bring this right up on the screen here. We'll just pick a Pixel 5. We'll start that. Okay, so here... You'll see I have press here to save the planet and shoot some meteors because I was going for like a kid's type game. Um, you know, meteors, got rid of the dinosaurs. Uh, I got a sign in and sign out button. You can do either one. Um, so if I hit sign in, you can do it by phone number, which 
isn't going to work on here because it's not a phone, but I wanted to show it on here. Or you can do sign in with Google and it will take me to the sign in screen here, which will not do anything because I'm not going to sign in on it. But yeah. if you Android sensors and events, accelerometer, GPS camera, other sensors, um, that's where I did the Bluetooth and I did the, um, the vibration. Uh, how I have it set, let's go into Space Meteors, um, where most people might have most of their stuff in main activity. I kept that class mainly for the database-driven stuff, the sign-in, uh, things like that. I have Space Meteors. This actually all originated kind of off the bouncing ball uh, Java to Kotlin uh, assignment. And it's nothing like that anymore, but that's where it kind of came from. Uh, that at, or inspired from we'll say so here we have um, well we'll come back to the noting but you'll see I have everything noted um, as it's supposed to be but what I need to do is I need to find the uh, the vibration so what I will do is I can actually just go to uh, duration which is right up here I kept all my uh, bars anything that was assigned like this I kind of kept together um, the counter is designed for every five, um, for every second you get a point, and I'm using the counter to uh, use the frames per second to give that. It's not exactly a second, but I wanted to have something to give someone a point. Uh, so we'll hit control, click on duration, and then here you'll go. You'll see I have uh, touch events here, and this is what handles everything, but you'll notice that I have things like uh, sensor manager. I got down to 10 uh, 10 seconds here. So this is rotate right, you have rotate left, bullseye is the firing of the laser, um, and for each one of those it's just 10 seconds. Just some a little haptic feedback just to let you, um, you know, feel that you're touching the screen. And then I even have, um, for collision, there we go. Uh, so for check collision, you'll come in here and you'll see like, um, let's find one here. So if a spaceship and a meteorite hit each other, it becomes uh, a longer one than just the 10 haptics. It's 600. It's the end of the game. It vibrates a little bit longer. Um, if your laser uh, or projectile, I call it in here, projectile hits a meteorite, then that's 200, a little longer than touching, but shorter than an explosion. And it will, um, and then you'll see it gives you 25 points to the counter, which is your score, um, which actually goes to the database, which since we did talk about the database, I'll go ahead and jump right in there real quick. So we'll go to scoring, right, scoring. And then here you'll have, you'll see I have like the life cycle registry in here and, and the scope. And then if you get down into it, um, I have the if statement that will um, take this high score here and set that up for you. So it'll come in here. It gets the score. Or it's passing from the um, my main class, not the main activity, but the space meteor, the one I'm using as the main. It'll pass the score into here. And then what it's doing is it's doing a if. If it's uh, greater than the high score that's in the database, it'll update high score. And then it will take the uh, score and give it to the user so it knows where to put it in the database. And then if it's not, um, then the database is just going to equal to the high score. And then that way, it's always updating. It's live. So while you're playing, if you do break the high score because it's in the upper left-hand corner, it will start going up while you're playing. Give you some a little incentive. Uh, maybe some future uh, growth, too. I wouldn't mind doing an arcade thing where depending on who signs into the phone to play, um, you can have like a scoreboard on it like you would see in an arcade. Um, and then, so that was the sensors. And then we go to uh, handlers and runnables multi-threading. I thought that was a good one for projectile. I did it for sound also. Uh, let's see here. Let's go to my sound effects. So my sound effects, and I can actually go into the raw folder here. Um, I got blip select, explosions, laser shoots, uh, scatter explode. Um, those are all controlling. So every time you shoot, the blip select, or so the blip select is every roughly about, 
I'd say maybe five seconds roughly, um, a meteorite comes out. And because they come out of the same area, but it's a random speed and it's a random direction. So what I did as I was playing it, I noticed that it's a little too random because you're using touch screens. So you're kind of covering up the screen a little bit. So every time you hear a little blip sound, uh, a meteorite's coming out. Uh, the explosion is just what it sounds like. It's a, it's an explosion of um, the meteorite. The laser shoot is the uh, laser sound of you shooting your guns, uh, the projectile, which I actually really like the choice in that one. And then the scatter explode, um, I call it scatter because it sounds like one of my favorite fireworks. I don't know how to describe it, but it uh, it's when your um, spaceship blows up, it kind of does a scatter. And I pass all those actually through, we are jumping around a little bit here, but I do pass all of those through a sound effects. There we go. I'm already in it here. Uh, so all those pass through here, through this class here. So I can I can come up with any sound I want and pass the uh, sound from wherever it's being activated to this class, and I don't have to rewrite it over and over again, all this stuff. But I did decide, so even though a media player is handling this and it does kind of handle things pretty decently, um, I kind of wish I would have put this in my audio video app that we did early on because I do notice some jarble, and I think this might have helped. Uh, hopefully, but uh, you'll see I put some multi-threading right in here uh, just to, oh, went too far, uh, right here. I did some multi-threading in here, and then for the projectile, so the projectile is an interesting class because that one here, you'll see I have a max projectile of 65. So this one, I did the projectile after the meteorites and the spaceship, and the meteorite and the spaceship are actually being called from my... Um, my main class, the space meter, but I wanted to go a little further and clean it up because that was getting out of hand. And the pro I, I got it so where the projectile class, not only does it handle all the information, it actually draws the, to the canvas also. Uh, so I actually really like this one here. Um, one of the hardest parts was to get it to follow the spaceship though, because if you're doing a rotate, it's easy to do an X and Y. It's hard to get the angle down. Uh, well, it was until I got it. And then once I got it, it wasn't too bad. Um, but you'll see in here, that uh, we'll go down here to the to the move because this is where well, actually it helps if I actually explain myself better. So max projectile 65. One problem with the rotation, which is down in the move, is, and this is where I did the multi-threading. When you're doing this, it's really hard, you know, for the spaceship. So I did three different things. I wanted it where the bullets or projectiles, lasers, whatever you want to call it, when they go off the screen, they go straight off the screen and you don't get them back. Um, meteorites I kept within the bounds, bouncing around. And then the spaceship, I had it where if you went off um, the vertical axis, you came in at the bottom of the vertical and also uh, left to right. So if you went off the screen at the right side, you came in on the left side, vice versa. So there's three three different ways, three different behaviors to the game. And I, I just thought it was interesting to do it that way. Um, it does make the game get difficult, but it also gives you ways to escape or maybe come in and attack on something. But you can't just shoot your lasers and have them come across the screen or bounce them around and just, you know, get all the points. You have to think about it a bit. The downfall is, is unlike the meteors in the spaceship where I was able to just say, you know, if X is beyond the screen width, um, cancel it out. It would work sometimes, so not all the time. So I did put it in there, but I had to raise how many, because I'm, I'm using a, a list to handle all this. So I found that 65 was a nice touch, but you could bog down slower items. Um, like uh, I have a really cheap tablet. Um, I played this on a whole bunch of different things. I found using hardware over the emulator is just much better for this kind of stuff. And because it was slowing it down, I did the multi-threading here, and I actually do feel like it kind of helped. Uh, but I also tweaked it a little bit, too, so that you wouldn't run out. And then after so many um, intervals of the timer that, you know, control the score or control just the gameplay and stuff, I have it set for about 60 frames per second. Um, in fact, we'll go back to that here. Uh, you know, the duration, things like that. We can go up here. And it is in my on draw. But it, uh, so what it does basically is after so much time, 
it will drop off the zero uh, spot uh, in the list. And it's up here. Here we go. So here we go. So here we go. There's a meter list here, and I got a list here. So the zero spot will drop off after so many seconds. And there's always a zero spot because it keeps dropping down. So it just knocks it off the... Um, knocks off the late last meteor so you're not getting like a any kind of bleed on it or anything like that um or memory leak you know because if you have too many objects out there that you don't see just because you don't see them doesn't mean they're not affecting you and i want those all to go away um explode list that's actually uh what i want to do is try to make my own particle um particle system for explosions and stuff but that i left it in there for myself that's for future use but uh let's see so that was the multi-threading I use that in a couple spots. XML and user interface design. So we will go to XML and user interface design projects. Here we go. And let's go to layouts. So activity main. This is the main screen. Uh, you can sign in, sign out. Press here to save the planet, shoot some meteors. That basically plays the game. Uh, one thing I found out with images, if you can do uh, vector-based graphics, do vector-based graphics. It's so much easier than trying to convert anything. Um, so I made this in Illustrator real quick. This is um, this spaceship is actually was my original one that was going to be designed for doing Flappy Birds, a Flappy Birds side style game. Um, but I feel like everybody does something like that, so I'm actually pretty happy I didn't do that. Instead, we'll double click it here. I ended up doing a uh, bird's eye view down because you're shooting all over the screen, as you probably already saw as I was playing. Um, a lot of the assets were in the system already. Uh, this laser here, this is actually just uh, the album asset uh, in the vector. Uh, the fire is also another one that's fire that's uh, for the control. And the left and right turn, I tried doing a bullseye. I did my own vector on it. I could have redone it, but um, I decided just to do the fire. I went too thin with the stroke lines on that. Um, and then the lines for left turn and right turn radius is just also assets in here. Uh, cratered meteor, I made that in Illustrator. And then uh, dino cover, that's what you saw in the XML. And then boost. That was a thought I had in place. Uh, if I had to do this again, I don't think I wouldn't even had to make my own spaceship. Uh, they have this version, and they have another one without the flames. Uh, I was thinking of that if maybe there was like a... I was going to do a missile attack or anything like that. But once I did the laser with the sound effect, I really liked how that sounds, so we just stuck with that. Um, but we'll jump back to the layout here. So yeah, so we have... Um, this is all one asset in the back here. Uh, I just called the dino cover. I'm grabbing it from the drawables here. Uh, then we have um, three buttons. Uh, if time permitted, I actually would have liked to maybe just made images for that too. Uh, but, you know, eight weeks, and I actually restarted this multiple times because as you're learning more and going, you realize you're doing it completely wrong and you got to redo it. Uh, Gradle is so lovely too. I learned don't mess with Gradle. Get your SHA keys right away because the more you mess with Gradle, the quicker... Firebase isn't going to cooperate with you, uh, especially if you want to do phone author authentication. Um, side notes. Uh, so that's that one. That's called in the beginning. Um, the game itself is actually not using an XML. Uh, that is just running by Canvas. So I got a little mix of everything. Uh, then this is a real simple XML. I was going to have the high score, like right here. Uh, when the game ends, let's flip this because this is not what it's supposed to look like this because I, I force it in the landscape so when the game ends it just says game over and restart on the screen uh this is all transparent so it freezes where you're at um because i wanted it to be kind of like um, a lot of games are that way that when the game ends it's just everything stops so that's how this is and this just is an overlay that goes over the top that it's called and then when you hit restart um, and you can touch anywhere in here which I, I had it as just a button at first but then I changed it to lengthwise because it's a touch screen and without a, I, I'm a hand control person, keyboard, mouse, or game controller. So this is, it was just weird to play. So it's nice where you don't have to, you know, hit directly on it. So I made it the width of the screen, but you hit restart and it restarts the game. Um, so that's pretty simple. Uh, so that was the XML and user interface and design. Um, 
relevance and creativity. Well, I think I did a pretty good job on it. It uh, I made a lot of the assets. I found a lot of the assets, and well, I programmed the game. The sounds, the sounds along with the assets, I think are a lot of fun. Um, let's see, moving on. Canvas and animation. Um, as you've probably seen on the screen, the game's been playing the whole time. Uh, and once in a while, I have the audio on it, too. Um, when I'm talking too much, uh, probably wish it was louder, but uh, I don't have it turned up as loud. But, yeah, the canvas and animation, I did canvas pretty much for the whole game. Animation, I mean, things are moving around constantly. Uh, pretty much did that. Outside media, uh, I just used an app that allows you to try different tones until you got it, and that's where I got the sounds from. They're... Uh, uh, nothing I used is copyrighted in any any way. Uh, it's either original or designed in the system to be used, or I made it outside of the system. Um, so almost everything was outside media, um, graphically and audio. Uh, optional recorded presentation. Extra 0 to 30 extra points. Presentation shows complete understanding of the app. Well, I do completely understand it because I wrote it. Um, delivery creative students work to sell the app as a violent interest product. Everyone should play this game. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, once again, it was overkill. I'm going back and listening to some of the other people did, I should have maybe kept it a lot simpler. Um, but I actually can, uh, um, I, I would feel fairly comfortable posting this now, uh, to the app store, but I think I actually want to do some more work on it. Um, I think it would... I think it has a lot of potential, and I've been very happy with it, and I want to actually do a little bit more. I want to do maybe some explosions when things blow up. Um, the audio I pretty much have, I'm really happy with that. Uh, maybe uh, maybe better controls, like I mentioned, maybe better buttons on the uh, layout. There we go. Do a better button system on here. Maybe even maybe animate this first screen. Can never have too much animation. Um, let's see, did I miss anything on here? No, not really, so... Um, as you could see on the screen throughout it, I was playing, I, w I was also playing the game. So you can see where, um, you know, on the upper left-hand side of the screen, it has the high score that's pulling from the database. So as long as it's that user on that device, uh, it always has its score. Uh, unless you go in the database like I did and you zero it out for, um, just showing that example. Uh, the upper right-hand score is the, you know, the current score. Um, and as you can see on the screen, like I mentioned earlier, I gave it three three senses of play in a sense where, um, you know, like I mentioned, the meteorites stay with inside the bounds, the ship crosses over, and the, um, the projectiles, none of that, they disappear off the screen. So you have to, you can't just sit in one spot and go over. And I have tried all the little tricks. Um, I'll do it right here, actually where you get down to the bottom and you let it go because the a ball will keep coming out or a meteorite will keep coming out. It will still get you eventually. And I have loaded it up. I let the app run for about an hour, just letting meteorites coming out and, uh, and it didn't crash. And then, so then I tightened it up a little bit so you can still hide at the bottom, but it will get you. It'll give you a false sense of hope. If you try to stay up above and shoot them where they're coming out, uh, it's, I tweaked that time. It uh, it works out good where you think you have it, and then one of them will get you. Um, so it's it's a challenging game. I think it's pretty good. I'm, you know, it's with a little bit more claim. Oh, yep. Let me back out. Show the icon. Uh, also, maybe I'll even. Most people probably fell asleep by now, so maybe I will go back and bring that up in the beginning. I did make an icon that was actually ridiculously easy to do. I was very surprised uh, if you have a vector base image. Um, any tutorial I read on it was horrible, and then just by accident, because I do use vectors, it wasn't too bad. Um, otherwise, I feel, I feel like I hit all the spots on here, and um, that's it. Thanks.